Hey guys, it's Control Destroy. I'm Gabe, aka Robo Ego, and today I'll be sharing with you 10 mechanical tips and tricks that'll help you build a better robot. Now, some of these tips may seem pretty basic, and like, duh, Robo Ego, I knew that. But sometimes it's those little details that will make or break a match. Unlike Kept Nuts or regular Hex Nuts, Nylock Nuts hold their position, even if they aren't tightened down all the way. This can help keep your robot from slowly falling apart and save you from those pesky penalties for robot debris on the field. And yes, it is a pain in the backside to put nylock nuts on, especially if they're in hard to reach places. But with the right tools and a little bit of elbow grease, whatever that is, you can get the job done. There are many different motor brackets available to FTC teams, and it's important to use the right one for the job. Use front mount brackets for a rigid and sturdy mount and save adjustable mounts for situations where you may need to adjust the motor's shaft position. Sometimes it can be hard to fit a motor where you need one. Instead of taking apart the robot, redesigning, and crying, try mounting the motor parallel to where you need power, and use chain to connect the shaft to the axle. As intimidating as it looks, PTC Creo, a CAD software, is quite easy to learn. There are plenty of tutorials for FTC teams out there, and all the resources you will need are free. You'll save time, money, and energy using the program while enhancing your designing capabilities. Use motors in places you need power, not precision, such as the drive chain, lifts, and arms undergoing a sufficient amount of stress. Then use servos for places where you need precision over power. Also, be sure to use motors and servos efficiently. If there are multiple motors or servos that are used together in an action, chances are there is a way of using a single actuator to control the entire action. When working on your robot, you'll occasionally drop a nut or bolt into the never-ending black hole abyss known as the center of your robot. Then, a few weeks later, your robot will decide it's time to poop out all those nuts and bolts. While in game. At a competition. The best way to keep those bad boys from dropping is by adding a belly panel to the bottom of your robot. It'll also prevent from any game elements getting stuck under your robot. While it may be tempting to use plywood, sheet metal, or other at-hand materials on the robot. Use plexiglass for all flat surfaces and panels. This will help protect your robot from electrostatic discharge while providing easy visibility to the rest of your robot. After many matches, things start to become loose on your robot. Be sure to tighten down on screws involved in the drivetrain and main mechanisms of your robot to avoid those free-spinning shafts and wobbly arms. And tears. This is a set screw. You've probably seen them on collars, hubs, nubs, and shaft couplers. Believe it or not, there is a right way to put on these things. Make sure the set screw is on the flat side of the axle, or you may end up with this. You can also use D-nubs or switch over to the Rev Hex hardware to avoid the stress put on the screw and axle. Even if you do set set screws properly, it's important to apply power directly to mechanisms, not axles. For example, connect the sprocket directly to a wheel, putting the stress of the wheel on the sprocket and screws, not the set screw and axle. This concludes our first 10 mechanical tips and tricks video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to stay in tune with our latest content. Again, I'm Robo Ego with Control Destroy, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.